G'day fellas and welcome to a casted game. We are here on Cliffside on the brand new patch to enjoy some OG civilizations facing it off in the brand new meta. Ladies and gentlemen, let's introduce our players for today. In the south corner of the map or in the south side of the map, in the color purple playing as the Chinese representing Team Liquid, it is Demu with a double scout opening. Hello. What do we got going on here? Lash also going to be going for a double scout because he is playing in the green as the roost in the north of the map. It's Lash. There we go. Okay, that makes sense. At first, I was a little bit curious, like, why are we seeing a double scout opening? And then it all made sense. It's because Demu is up against the roost. Now, this is a matchup that personally, I don't really like as the Chinese. I always found this a difficult matchup in the late game just simply because of the springholds that the roos have got access to of course for anybody unfamiliar uh with the way that it works so your springholds have got 10 range when they get to imperial age you've got roller shutter triggers which increases that to 12 range the roos have got a special unique upgrade which allows them to get an extra 0.5 range which might not seem like a lot uh, but when it comes to springholds on springholds having that extra little bit of range can really make a big deal as to who gets their shots off first. And as a result, quite commonly in the late game, we do see Rus players being very effective with their siege. So to me, look, one of the things that I'm noticing, I don't know if you guys are seeing this trend, but the age of siege is back. Yes, that's, that's correct. Both of these civilizations have got something that gives them a really big bonus when it comes to Siege, of course. The Chinese now back in flavor. They received a brand new buff in the most recent patch. And if you're unfamiliar with that, let me, inf let me tell you what it is. The Imperial official costs 100 food and 50 gold. But if you go for their early landmark, which is the Imperial Academy, let's see if I can show it to you right here, uh, it, you'll see that it now says Imperial officials produced here cost 30% less resources, uh, which is a brand new buff. So they cost quite a bit less. Uh, and that's definitely a nice little thing that helps you out with your tempo in the early game. So I'm excited to see exactly which direction demo goes. Because one of the things I think with that change, what you're probably going to see is a trend away from 2TC. And I know that seems a little bit weird, but just let it cook for a bit and we'll see. We'll see what happens. Anyway, um, other than that, so obviously we've got the Astronomical Clock Tower, which produces uh, siege units with a much greater hit point pool. And of course, with the nerf to Springlords, that just makes them even stronger. Uh, but over on the other side for the Roost, they've got that cheaper siege in the Imperial Age uh, with their Imperial Age landmark. Um, so expect to see that as well. But age ups are about to come through you can see lash slowly getting that gold in now we'll be able to go up and expect to see towards that front of the base as we can see plenty of villagers making their way out it's going to be the kremlin a very very nice position that he's got here between the gold and the stone so it means if he wants to go into that second town center he can do without pretty much any hassle whatsoever now we do also see a wheelbarrow on the way through for him as well about five seconds to go no wonder he was struggling on that gold he's been doing pretty well with his bounty uh, if that is the case wheelbarrow now coming through on the other side of the map though in the imperial academy gonna be thrown down for demo nice little spot that he's got here we'll hit the gold we'll hit hit the mill and of course we'll hit that wood line as well and the most important thing is that it's going to hit the majority of the wood line this is as good as you can get it because what's going to happen is that Demu is going to be replacing his lumber camps throughout this, and the influence of this Imperial Academy will extend out towards those central lumber camps, which means he's going to be maximizing his tax early on in this game. And that'll be a really important thing that he can rely on, because when it comes to gold on this map, you can sometimes get difficult spawns. We've seen it time and time again where players get two front golds. Now, fortunately for Demu, he does, he does have a back gold here. Uh, and the same thing for Lash, he's also got a back gold. So in the event that they do lose these front golds, they'll be A-OK, -okay, but it looks like Lash will be opting for a second TC in this game up against the Chinese. No real surprise there. I'd be curious to see whether he goes for a third TC, though. Uh, just mainly because when you are playing as the Rus and you're pumping out villagers, you know, three every minute out of your TCs, you're up against the Chinese who are doing four a minute out of their TCs and you don't want to fall too far behind. You know, eight villagers on two TCs for the Chinese versus six villagers uh, for two TCs on the Rus every minute. Uh, so eight versus six. Adding in that third TC just really helps out quite a bit. So it's, uh, it's important to consider. The age ups now come through for Demon. Immediately clicking on double Imperial official. I love this from him. Uh, and I expect that this is probably going to be the direction that we see a lot of Chinese players look to go. So he's going to be looking to really get that supervision going out on these uh, on the lumber camps or maybe on the stone outcropping down here. Uh, but of course, this will also mean that he is able to pick up his tax. 
Another thing to note is that we'll probably see Imperial Examinations come through quite quickly. I was having a look at this technology and I was like, man, this is actually a really good tech. I can't believe that they get this in the Feudal Age. Like, this is kind of crazy when you think about it. 40, it goes from 40 gold capacity to 80 gold capacity. That's absolutely wild. Look at this. We got two Imperial officials standing by ready to pick up some gold. That's how keen they are to get this gold in the coffers. Uh, they are having a good time, but... Now, Demu, with the Barbican in the front of the base, definitely a little bit of a delay on that Song Dynasty 2TC. And I'm curious exactly how that plays out for him. Um, and I'm curious to see whether he does opt to move into that second town center. We can see that Lash not really looking to scout it out. Now, Demu on the other side of the map has got his double scout out. He's definitely spotted the mining camp on that stone outcropping. We'll see that it's only had the 350 taken off it. So it's only going to be the 1TC for the moment. But we'll need to think about... Uh, Going with a response, maybe looks to go into a second TC himself. So we'll wait and see exactly how that plays out. Song Dynasty now online, six minutes into the game. Normal timing that you can expect to see for that second TC for the Chinese used to be about 6.15 to 6.20. So Demo's a little bit behind at the moment, but that's only because he is playing with this new strategy. He's looking to get a bit of an early game economy rolling here for the Chinese. Of course, one of the things he'll be looking to do is pick up those early upgrades with Wheelbarrow now coming in as well. Scout just going to be spotting out. Villagers transitioning over onto the stone outcropping. And do we see villagers returning to Lash onto stone? Or does he go straight into Castle Age? He's got a couple of options as to how he plays it. One of the interesting things that I'm seeing here is that he didn't opt to go for an early stable. One of the things that I often mention whenever I'm coaching the Rus over on my Patreon, which if you'd like to check out, and if you want to improve, if you're a Rus main, then, uh, you know, there's plenty of Rus content over there, so go check it out. But one of the things I often talk about is the idea of getting that early night into your opponent's base really early on. I'm talking, you know, before the five-minute mark, where it can be very impactful. You can hit things like the gold, hit things like the stone, and it, it hurts your opponent. It forces them to respond, either with something like an outpost, forces them to respond with a barracks. We don't see that here. We, Demu is just doing what he wants and it's never a good idea to let the Chinese player do what they want because often what they want to do is just make lots of villages and live a good life uh, and that is exactly what Demo is doing at the moment and now that stable will come down but I can't help but feel like it just it, it's just a bit late that's all I would have loved to have seen this stable coming up before the second TC uh, but uh, Flash now going to be scouting out exactly what Demo's up to we'll see that second TC has been placed down it's under construction and only enough for two TCs has been taken off and that's pretty much where he would expect it to be i think at, at this stage of the game like you're not going to be expecting three tcs from the chinese you expect three tcs from the juicy legacy but not from the chinese the chinese uh, to be honest it's just way too much uh, villager production you can't actually uh, whenever i'm playing the chinese and I, i've i've got three tc song dynasty i just feel like i can't hold all these villages there's just too many villages i'm not spending any of my food on units and i'm just getting overwhelmed completely with the amount of villages i've got now that's you know it's it's one of those things where you're suffering from success uh but we'll ride on board with demo as it looks like he's going to be putting down some production facilities he's got that double scout out remember he did lose one of them just a little bit ago uh, but uh, knows exactly what his opponent is up to now, one thing to note is we've got some villagers that are going to be migrating off these off these uh, these sheep very, very soon over towards the berry. So this will become a point of exposure. I'm curious whether Lash is going to be looking to apply damage to this area. Uh, I don't think we'll see any wooden fortresses or anything like that, but we may potentially see a knight or two come in. So expect to see maybe the barracks units rallied over towards that position. And now it looks like it's going to be Zhukunu coming in. Now, I will say that... In this matchup, the Zhukunu is a little bit more powerful than against the French. It still doesn't feel good to be playing Zhukunu in this matchup just because the Knight is so good at tanking the damage from the Zhukunu. So the Zhukunu has got a base of four damage. The Knight has got a base of three armor, which means that the Zhukunu is only doing that one damage every every strike that it's got or every, every attack that it's got. Of course, it does get three attacks every round or three bursts, uh, but uh, it always just feels a bit underwhelming. But uh, we're right on board now with Lashes. He's looking to start stacking up those units. He's actually hiding them away in the Kremlin. You can see that uh, Demu's getting a bit of an idea here as to whether he wants to push out. But to be honest, I think the ball is in the court of Lash at the moment. Because realistically, as I've said before, 
the strength of the Chinese is just in the waiting game. We just want to wait with the Chinese. We just want to chill. We want to bide our time. We want to allow our opponent to just let us do what we want to do. And that's really, that's exactly what Lash is doing here. So, you know, as I mentioned before, I think if Lash was on three TCs, I think, you know, he would be fine doing what he's doing. But the reality is Demu is outscaling him. And it's quite a fierce outscale. As I mentioned before, every eight or every minute, there's eight villagers coming in from, for Demu. Whereas for Lash, there's only six villagers coming in. So over 10 minutes, that's going to be a 20 minute or 20 villager difference between these two players, which might not seem like a lot, but it really starts to add up when you think about, you know, that's basically free, uh, 20 free villagers that are just gathering this gold. Uh, and uh, yeah, there's no real response that you can issue to that. So we'll ride on board with Demi. We'll see how he's doing. We're at the 10 minute mark. So we'll switch it over to income per minute, get a bit of an idea on where these two currently sit. So it looks like for Demu at around that 1600, 2.1K. Yeah, we'll call it 2.1K for Demu. And then for Lash at the moment, we see 1300, about 1700 income. So about 400 income per minute difference between these two, which you would expect when you consider that there's not just uh, a villager difference, but there's also an Imperial official difference as well, which is going to give you that extra 20% wood, extra 20% food, extra 20% gold as well. So really important to keep that in mind. Of course, the Rus have got access to that 20% wood as well uh, which is going to be coming through from their kremlin you can see that, that nice little buff has arrived over here but that's only going to affect the wood gatherers and there are 17 of them but of course there's plenty of other gatherers out on the map that aren't getting that buff up all right well the number of units are starting to build here both players just playing a bit of a passive opening here and neither player really looking to commit at this stage flash going to be making mogul moves around the edge of the map here Avoiding that Barbican. Of course, both of these civilizations having access to a very strong keep-style landmark. The Kremlin, of course, only has the ability to get the Springled Emplacement. Whereas the Barbican of the Sun can also get the Cannon Emplacement a little bit later. So this is effectively a keep. It's a keep that requires wood to repair. And you get it in the Feudal Age. It's an incredibly strong landmark. You know, initially when the Barbican came out, I was like, eh, this kind of sucks. But they changed it. They made a change. So back in the day, you never used to be able to get these emplacements. You could never get Springwood emplacements, never get cannon emplacements, and it meant that your Barbican was just a glorified outpost. But with that change, that single change to now give it the access to emplacements, it means that it is a powerhouse that you need to respect once you get to... E even the Castle Agent, it is still very respectable because of that Springwood emplacement. But now moving down on the south, Demo has scouted out his opponent. He knows exactly what he's up to. Spears together with the Zhuganu are going to be looking to focus down these early knights and you can see how much damage they're able to apply. The ranged armor has come through, but all the rest of the upgrades still yet to come through for Lash. Compare that over to Demo, who's got the ranged armor as well as the ranged attack and he's able to clean this up completely. Now that ranged attack will come through for Lash. More upgrades on the way through as well. Looks like he's looking for fitted leather work and just gets absolutely obliterated by those Zhuganu. 18 Zhuganu starting to look like 18 crossbow the way that they dealt with these, these, uh, these ranged units or the, these heavy units rather uh, impressive defense right there from Demu let's check in on the base he's got a fair bit of production towards the front and can I just compliment Demu on his base building absolute A plus for base building right now this is the perfect base that you can have as the Chinese honestly he has built this base perfectly I, I could not I, I could not fault him I will say that much it is absolutely flawless all right well we'll check in with Lash as he looks to expand a little bit aggressively towards this east side of the map. There are deer over here, but he's opted instead towards this wooden fortress. I guess he liked his chances a little bit too much and Demu's going to look to punish him. Keep in mind, there's seven villagers in here. One of them's already gone down and it looks almost certain like Lash will be losing them. Demu going to continue rallying in troops and you can see it's a little bit more distance for Lash to get in on these positions. A beautiful micro coming through from Demu. The spears towards the back. And now all of a sudden, those Zhuganu are able to force away those archers, meaning there might be a little bit of space here for the villagers. The villagers need to go right now. They got to go right now. If they don't go right now, he's going to be in trouble. Oh, you can see just how tense this is. The Zhuganu numbers continuing to build. He's rallying in more and more troops from that west side. You can see the numbers. He's actually heading down towards that south side instead. But now the Zhuganu look like they may have won the battle. I think there's a couple of... Yeah, there's still a couple of knights up here. If he could get these knights down here, it could be the difference between life and death. But with this outpost coming up, villagers will repair the wooden fortress. But I feel like it's only a matter of time until you lose out on this position. Lash now down 10 villagers. We talked about this earlier. The fact that... 
It's only going to be a matter of time until the Chinese player will outscale you if you're on 2TC against 2TC. You can't play this like you're against the Juicy Legacy. And now, now Demu going to be throwing down that battering ram. The villagers make the right call. They need to evacuate the dance floor, my friend. It is very greedy, very aggressive to be thinking you're going to be getting your hands on this boar carcass. It's a little bit too close, I'd say, to your opponent's base. And unfortunately, the reinforcements, they come to a little bit, they come through a little bit too thick and fast. And as a result, it might be a good idea to head back to the drawing board. But speaking of drawing boards, Demu, I think he might be gearing up for a castle age. Definitely the right time for it. We do now start to see a granary transition as well. Uh, keep in mind the granary transition is going to be a little bit harder on the Chinese compared to the Juicy Legacy. Just because you are going to be paying full price for your, uh, for your farms, for your granaries, of course. Uh, even though the Juicy Legacy did get that Song Dynasty bonus nerfed, where it went from 40% reduction down to a 30% reduction, it's still incredibly strong. Uh, so it will mean that that Chinese farm transition is going to take a little bit more time uh, than, uh, than what we're used to, because we've just seen non-stop Juicy Legacy for the last couple of uh, last couple of weeks, couple of months or almost. How long has the, the uh, expansion been out? It's been out for a good couple of months, hasn't it now? What, two, three months almost? Jeez, that's not too bad, is it? Man, time flies when you're having fun, doesn't it? We can we can say that much. Age up's going to start coming through. Lash with the resources. Probably going to be looking for the Great Wall Gatehouse. The Great Wall Gatehouse. The uh, High Trade House. Uh, but instead, actually going to go for the Abbey of the Trinity. On the other side of the map, almost certainly you could expect the Astronomical... Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Three town centers. Song Dynasty. Definitely not needed, but definitely welcome. Now, I, I will provide the caveat. My earlier comments where I said, you know, 3TC Song Dynasty, you feel like you can barely hold the villagers. Uh, that was, I guess I should caveat, that That was, you know, 3TC straight or 3TC naked, uh, you know, with nothing else uh, going on. Uh, here, Demu's had a nice little bit of time to build up. He's up to 92 villagers now. So the third TC is coming at a time where he can definitely support this, especially now that the farm transition is underway as well. I think this is an absolutely perfect time to add this in. I don't think this is necessary. I feel like he was already ahead by quite a bit. And have a look at this cheeky little battering ram. Demu just like, you know what? Let's Maybe we'll get it. Maybe we won't. We'll have to see how we go. At least he's going to force villagers. Actually, will he even force villagers to get pulled here? The knights might be able to handle it themselves. Anyway, lashes up to the castle age. Abbey of the Trinity coming through here. I guess realistically, he didn't really have a good spot to put down the high trade house. So this probably does make the best sense. Like you could put it over here, but even then you're not going to get that many trees. You could probably go over here, but even then you're probably not going to pick up a lot. Maybe the Abbey of the Trinity just makes sense to be going into these warrior monks. So well, well played by him. Clock tower on the other side. Upgrades are starting to come through. We've seen the knights be upgraded to Castle Age Knights. Veterancy on those archers, as well as ranged armor now coming through as well for him. For him. Exactly what he needs going up against these Zhukunu. And he wants to try and push this right now. It's imperative that he strikes right now. And the reason why is because that in, that Castle Age has just come through for Demu, and he wants to try and fight before these upgrades get in for Demu. But you can see he's got supervision coming in on these upgrades, and it means almost certainly it's not going to happen. Demu doing a really, doing just, he's playing it perfectly. Honestly, Demu's Chinese is impressive. This is incredible. I, I'm going to say it now. I think Demu's Chinese might be the best Chinese in the game at the moment. It is just, it is, I, I, I cannot fault it. I really cannot fault it. Got to be careful with those spears though. Spearman upgrade yet to come through. Palace Guard's now going to be brought into the battle as well. Nice little job there on the backside. Knight's going to be copping a fair bit of damage from these Zhukunu, but you can see they're only going to be doing one damage a pop, and he's just able to overwhelm with the Zhukunu mass. Palace Guard still running in. He's going to cop a couple of villager losses in by the looks of it, but you can just see how well he's able to manage it, and together with the fact he's got so much production on this backside, Demu's in a really good spot here, and I'm starting to worry for Lash. I think the only way Lash is going to win this is if somehow he manages to catch a really good fight with Siege. Like, maybe he gets off a really good Manganel shot, or, you know, somehow manages to get up to Imperial Age before Demu does, which I don't think is going to happen, just purely because Demu's already on three TCs. His economy is absolutely massive. His 20 vils up... And he's up about 40 population at this stage. So I just don't see Lash getting up to Imperial Age before Demu does. I guess the other option is that he might look to strike as Demu hits Imperial, but it can be really tough. One of the things to remember against the Chinese and against the Juicy Legacy is that they have Imperial officials. So the window to hit them in their age up is very, very small. Realistically, against a normal civilization, you're looking at a minute before those elite upgrades come through. But with the Imperial official using that supervision, 
it reduces that window down to, you know, 25 seconds. Uh, and that is not a lot of time to push in and actually force a fight with your opponent before those elite upgrades come through. But now Demo is starting to move towards this top side. First nest of beasts is out on the map. Manganel in queue for Lash. Lash. Gotta be careful here. Archer numbers starting to look pretty good, but Nesta Beast firing off. We've talked about it already. Keep in mind, with your Springled, you need three shots to kill a Manganel. Now, a Manganel has a base hit point of, I think it's 140, I want to say. Let's have a look and see. Man Manganel's about to come out here. Let's have a look and see. Mango, 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 Mango Tango. Mango, 140 health. So... Each Springle does 90 siege damage, but you've also got the 30 armor to deal with. Look at this, Palace Guards. Look like they might actually catch a Relic off guard or a Warrior Monk with a Relic off guard. He could actually hit the Wall of Lol if he wanted, and he could probably... I mean, he probably wouldn't capture these Palace Guards, but, uh, I mean, he's just going to kill them instead. Yeah, I'll take that way. Imperial Age. Speaking of Imperial Age, look how quick Demu is to go to Imperial Age. That's absolutely ludicrous how quick he has transitioned this into an Imperial Age position. But he's feeling good about himself. The single nest to be is out 210 health. So remember, it's going to be uh, 60 damage for each Springled. So a Springled needs four shots to kill a nest to be, clock, a clock tower nest to be. And that's without the Siege Works upgrade. With the Siege Works upgrade, I don't even want to know. It's probably going to be like six shots to one shot a nest to be's. And you might be saying, but Drongo, it's fine. I'm just going to make three Springleds and then I'm going to kill it with two shots. The problem that you've got there, little Johnny. What if your opponent starts repairing their nest of bees? You need to one-shot. One-shot is the most important thing that you can do against Siege because Siege can actively be repaired in the field. It's really important that you take it down in that single sweep. All right, well, at the moment, upgrades are on the way. Battle Hardened, Elite Palace Guards, together with Ancient Techniques on the way. Expect to see that University upgrade together. Look for that Elite Palace Guard uh, with the Elite Army Tactics. Let's, let's see if we can actually spot out a University and whether it's gone up just yet... Uh, I know it. Where, what about ancient techniques? Where do you get ancient techniques from? Is it like, is it the mill? Did they stay? I feel like they might have switched it. It's not the mill. Isn't ancient techniques from the university? I thought it was like a unique upgrade from the university. Anyway, we'll worry about it another day. Mangoes, mangoes, mangoes! Oh, God! <laughs> Demo! 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 Demo getting demoed right now. Villagers, you can see they're throwing down the Imperial Palace on the front, but they're not even going to have a chance to get it up. Demo is in trouble right now. These mangoes are really looking to tango right now with Demo. You can see that the, the nest of bees is going to get cleaned up completely. Now, keep in mind, Demu's got the palace guards on his side. The crossbow numbers have begun to build for Lash, though, at this stage in the game. Demu looking to really try and defend his best here. I think, realistically, what Lash needs are more knights. More knights for this front line. The mangoes are looking really sweet. But keep in mind, Demu could actually just throw a siege workshop down, get a sprinkled or two supervised out, and as long as he's got roller shutter triggers, he'll be A-OK. -okay. Oh, no. Oh, no. Fire lances. Fire Lancers are, are, are coming out and there's nothing to stop them. There's absolutely nothing to intercept the Fire Lancers. And now all of a sudden, look at the number of Fire Lancers that are slowly building up. I say slowly, it's not slow. It's really, really quick right now. And just when we thought that it was going to be, just when we thought it was going to be the Manganel and the Siege that was going to do it, Demu runs in behind enemy lines and goes point blank onto this Siege. Fire Lancers make their way through. Demu looking to clean up everything. He's got Elite Palace Guards here together with the Elite Fire Lancers. Another Manganel going to get intercepted and all these ranged units have extended too far and Demu looks to punish his Rus opponent so damn hard. Look at the amount of units that are just here for Demu and they just don't stop. They just don't stop. He's got so many units. Oh, look at the amount. Look at the amount of stables that are back here. That's exactly why. Oh my lord. How quickly the tables have turned. In the blink of an eye, Demu went from in trouble to troublemaker. Have a look at this. 53 military population against four. In the blink of an eye, it's all gone downhill for Lash. 24 minutes into this game, Demu sits in a very strong position. I love that he's going to throw down the Pagoda for a single relic in that monastery. Keep in mind, three relics have gone into that Abbey of the Trinity. A fourth relic also going into the monastery somewhere. There it is. Back here. 
but where do you even go from here is Lash. I don't even know, man. Th this is the reason why Drongo encourages people to go crossbow spear. Really important, crossbow spear. You don't go crossbow mango sprinkled. You go crossbow spear mango sprinkled, all right? This is why we can't have nice things. You need to make spearman Lash. And now he's got the memo. He's like, all right, Drongo, I'll make spears. How's 20? Yeah, 20 is fine, Lash, but it would have been great a minute ago or two minutes ago before you dived into your opponent's base. High armory coming up now. There's already fire lancers in your base with elite upgrades they've yet to have that biology but it doesn't really matter and now the cleanup happens he's not surviving through this one ladies and gentlemen it is all over red rover i can tell you without a shadow of a doubt keep goes up in the middle of the map it looks like the villagers did get eliminated but that's going to knock him off that gold he's going to pull a couple more forward from that all oh, the, the gremlins get called the kremlin gremlins get called he's got 24 of them out on the map can that be what saves him in this fight meanwhile the villagers are starting to fall both players losing in excess of 30 villagers already this game. I tell you what, the high armory's got a long way to go, but the gremlins should be able to defend him for the most part on it. The main issue you're going to have is behind the scenes, all of these fire lancers just absolutely having a field day in the heartland, farmland of that Rus. Oh my lord, the Imperial Age does come through. Now you've got an opportunity to get yourself back on an even footing with your opponent, but the reality is you're down a huge amount of villages, you're down a huge amount of walls, and you're going to be down a huge amount of games, as unfortunately right there, Lash has to tap out. It's going to be Demu with the victory, a huge military amount that he's got there. Fellas, go check him out. I'll leave links in the description of where you can watch them both live over on Twitch. So go say good day from me, and we'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching.